My name is Peter van der Grif, and I'm traveling with my motorcycle from the Netherlands to Australia. This movie is about my time in Nepal. But first, let me summarize the previous two months in Pakistan and India. Riding with Martin through Pakistan was sometimes a bit stressful, mainly because of the police overprotecting us for almost three weeks, making sure the only way we were experiencing the country was from our motorbikes. Long days in the heat with almost no breaks made us feel hungry, exhausted and frustrated. India wasn't much better. Me and Martin said goodbye to get the intense experience of traveling alone again, but sometimes it was a bit too intense. At the time I finally got here, I felt the lowest in my trip so far. I'm having diarrhea for weeks and I feel nauseous the whole day. My aching body makes my mind spin in negative thoughts. There's no question of stopping my trip, but I'm not enjoying it at all anymore. Namaste. Hello. 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 Yeah, the temple. The temple. That's the same temple. Okay. This one. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. All good. <laughs> You're running, huh? Yeah. You're fit. Yeah. Ah, good. Where are you from? Netherlands. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Bye bye. Bye bye. Namaste. On my second day in Nepal, the owner of my guest house brought me to this lift and gave me a password I had to tell the ticket office to get on for free. There was supposed to be a very famous temple on the mountain, but I never found it. Apparently it was next to the elevator station, but I went the wrong way and ended up hiking the mountain with an American couple. What I did find though, was the kindness of the Nepali people. The last days in India I was surrounded in no time, every time I stopped. The big crowds would stare in silence from a short distance. It made me freak out, I couldn't get the rest I needed during a day of riding. In Nepal, the people respected my personal space. They say hello with a big smile and ask about my trip. Where do you live? I live in the Netherlands. Netherlands? Netherlands. Do you know the Netherlands? No? Tokyo. Tokyo? Ah. ah. At my time being in Nepal, a fuel crisis is going on so I have to ride with low RPMs. The roads are empty though, and after the hectic Indian traffic, I can finally relax on my motorcycle. But it also means I'm again missing out on the Himalaya mountains. The Himalayas were supposed to be the scenic highlight of my trip. In Pakistan, I wasn't allowed by the police to ride the beautiful Karakoram Highway because of the sudden risk of a terrorist attack on a Shia festival in Gilgit. In India, heavy snowfall destroyed my dream of riding the famous Lemanali route. I felt like I had failed as a motorcycle adventurer and took it on myself for missing out on these magical places I dreamed about before setting off on this trip. Being physically and mentally low opened the door for these crazy thoughts. But I still had to go to Kathmandu to get my visa for Myanmar. So with my tank and spare cans full, I drove to the capital hoping I would have enough. At all the borders, blockade stopped trucks with fuels and supplies from getting into the country. 
The government of Nepal has accused India of opposing the blockades as a reaction to the new Maoist government and a new constitution. India denies, stating the blockades are imposed by the Madesi, a minority group in Nepal with strong ties to India, who are protesting against the new constitution of Nepal because it's marginalizing them. The consequences are clear. The roads are empty and many vehicles are thrown at the land. The fuel is hard to get by. This is a gas station in India just before the border with Nepal. I could only get fuel on the black market where I paid 3 to 5 dollars a liter. It's a lucrative business for some. I heard rumors of Mafia making a lot of money and paying people for keeping up the blockades. The fuel crisis also meant people had no gas to cook on and many restaurants couldn't offer the meals they usually served. The economy of Nepal is based on tourism and now the tourists stayed away. As a right to Kathmandu, an impressive process of school kids is going on. Thousands of kids front the line shouting things like back off India. To me, the fuel crisis seemed like a stupid political game in which the people who not long ago also endured a devastating earthquake were the ones who paid the price and to suffer the most. I visited the hospital and left with a bag full of medicine for my stomach problems. When I got back to my hostel, I met the owner of a travel agency who offered me a trekking tour with a guide in the Annapurna conservation area. I felt like it was exactly what I needed to get my mind straight. And so I left my motorbike in the capital and went into the mountains to walk for five days with my guide Shiva. <laughs> Taking a guide was expensive and not really necessary, but it was nice my days were suddenly organized with someone else and I could focus completely on enjoying the trek. The thousands of staircase steps were a pain in the ass, literally. However, the physical strain brought me in a meditative state. The peaceful surroundings calmed me down, and as I followed the path that lay in front of me, I began to take a journey in my own mind as well. Finally, for a moment, I could step out of my adventure and put things in perspective. When you're traveling alone, you can sometimes lose yourself in fuss. Not always will people back home understand what you're going through. You're on holiday, what are you complaining about? Actually, I didn't even know where to start explaining. Looking back, I just needed a break from all the adventure. I was traveling way too fast, even making long crazy days while I was sick. The culture shock made me drive on like crazy. There were also very intense moments that shook me up. Like meeting a big tough Pakistani soldier being moved to tears as he told me that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism. Or when I was riding through villages in the north of Pakistan, where I was stared at by hundreds of Bin Laden lookalikes. But when you start talking to them, they are just really nice people. And it didn't take long for the western prejudiced view to be out of my system. And when I got to India, free from escorts and bodyguards, and no more travel companions to talk to, it was just me, India, and the culture shock. While trekking I was going to bed with sunset around 7 and waking up at 5. The medicine started to work and finally my body didn't have trouble with the food. 
It didn't take long before I started to feel better. I was also meeting other travelers again. Finally I could have a normal conversation with people. My guide Shiva was smart and funny and taught me a lot about the Napoli culture as well. But the highlight of the trekking tour was a visit to the hot springs where I relaxed for a couple of hours and listened to stories of an old German hippie who traveled my route in the 70s. He started his trip riding a Mercedes car to Iran, bribed the customs and sold it. He then had enough money to travel on for months. In Pakistan, he climbed into the back of a truck full of sheep and hid until he got himself in the mountains between Pakistan and Afghanistan. There he stepped inside a world where opium and weapons were being sold openly everywhere on the streets. An experience hard to have now. Back in Kathmandu, I meet Martin again at the workshop of the Pushpa brothers. Many overlanders come here to let them take care of their bikes. And for a reason, these guys work like surgeons, almost offering a goat at the temple for the well-being of your bike. I do an old change, replace my brake pads, a mounted front tire I got from Martin back in Iran. It was time to hit the road again.
scenery, I stopped along the road at a sign for a hotel. What I didn't know is that the hotel in Nepal isn't always a place to sleep, but most of the time a restaurant for truck drivers. I got off my bike and asked the owner if I could stay and to show me the rooms. He said yes and showed me his own bedroom behind the kitchen and then asked if I had a tent. They didn't mind my visit at all. I felt right away at home. Sanika made sure I wasn't feeling hungry any second. Her husband Baira happened to be the local dealer. Besides wheat and magic mushrooms, I could easily get hold on petrol, having no worries at all getting stranded riding out of the country back to India. <laughs> Rice. Rice. Uh, Dal. Dal. Is it you? He showed you. 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 Yeah, this is the best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Curry okay. and rice and dal. So. Dal and you. You. The best part. Right. It's like butter, huh? Yeah, yeah. How do you make it? This uh, from milk. I make from milk. Uh. I have to make in you know you have to mash a lot up and then come butter. Uh. Then I have to fry. I have to cook a lot of time. A lot of time, yeah. And then come like this. Uh. And so my time in Naples was over. I got what I needed. Physically I was feeling better and I had a peace of mind. Thank I hope you, you enjoyed wow. my movie. And if you wish to see more of my adventure, please like my Facebook page or visit my website.